Hello, you're watching the latest news from Kazakhstan. I'm Askar Shereliev. Here are the top stories. Financial affairs of the potential presidential candidate Vladimir Kozlov are investigated by the fiscal police. The General Prosecutor's Office will not arrest the former owner of the Alliance Bank Marbulan Sisimbayev until appropriate court order. The Uskaminogorsk public activists want the authorities to explain how the population should survive on a minimal wage. New accusations against the possible presidential candidate Vladimir Kozlov were forwarded on Thursday. This time, the leader of the unregistered party Alga fell under the scrutiny of the financial police of Almaty, which looks into his business history. The financial police picked up the investigation that was started by tax inspectors this summer, suspecting the leader of the unregistered party of understating his individual income taxes. The leader of the unregistered party Alga, Vladimir Kozlov, evades taxes claimed on Thursday the country's financial police. The tax inspection found undeclared $22,000 while auditing Kozlov's business activities from April to June of this year. The tax authorities found evidence of Kozlov understating his individual business income tax. This is in no way connected to his public or political activities. Kozlov learned about the financial audit from reporters and seemed unsurprised by the news. In the past, he has been already charged with understating individual taxes. However, the opposition says that the money the financial police refers to are the shares of Kozlov and his deputy Muradbek Kitibayev collected together and legalized for the party work. The activist has appealed to the financial police the last audit, and according to the law, he now has time to prove his innocence before the tax authorities. The three months have not passed yet, and we have the right to appeal this in court. Political analysts say that this is the doing of Kozlov's pro-governmental force, and everything is explained by the oppositionist's intention to run for president. The pressure will not subside and will likely lead to a trial. The financial police will look for more or less serious evidence base for the tax areas to use it as a tool of keeping the party leader from taking part in the campaign trail. Vladimir Kozlov, though, intends to fight the financial police, which in turn promised to announce the results of their audits in the nearest future. On Wednesday, Vladimir Kozlov also appeared in the news when he and his associates were pelted with eggs by a group of nationalist-minded citizens who were also shouting insults. After disrupting the press conference, uh, the people who called themselves members of the movement Zeltoksan 86 were simply led by the police and the, at the scene and were summoned for questioning only several hours later after the president of the National Press Club, Sid Kazimataev, filed a complaint about the incident. Now the hooligans will be charged with disturbing the public order, although their nationalistic insults could have been easily filed under a much stricter article of the criminal code. After egging the future presidential candidate Vladimir Kozlov and fighting reporters, the leader of the public movement Zeltoksan 86, Gulbakram Zhunis, went home on her Lexus. The police didn't bother to detain the organizer of the unsanctioned action. Only several hours later, Zhunis was summoned for questioning to the district station after the director of the National Press Club, Seyd Kazimataev, submitted a written complaint. The outrageous action, although producing no understanding among the fellow movement members, was not condemned nevertheless. One of the Zeltoksan founders, Bareta Yergaliva cautiously notes that, with his intention to run for presidency, Vladimir Kozlov might have stirred up a hornet's nest. 24 years after the tragic events of Zeltoksan, Kozlov says that he will be running for president, forgetting the true reasons of the protest of a certain part of the Kazakh population. I believe this was inappropriate. It is not about the timing. Kozlov should not have done this at all. The first secretary of the Communist Party of Kazakhstan, Gazi Saldamjarov, disagrees with Yirgaliva and decries the incident. He feels that a non-Kazakh president, unencumbered by inter-clan relations, could only benefit the country. I am ashamed that they, being Kazakhs themselves, embarrass Kazakh nation with their actions. No matter what they will tell me later, I can only see their behavior as casting shadow over the intelligence of the very nation. The co-chairman of the Social Democratic Party Azad, Jarmakhan Tuyakbay, already experienced once something similar to what happened with Vladimir Kozlov. In 2005, someone threw a brick at him, also during a presidential campaign trail. For him, the link between the two events is obvious. 
If this was initiated by the authorities, as it was in 2005, then they should realize that they're playing with fire. After letting the genie of the national extremism out of the bottle, it is virtually impossible to get him back there. This is the fire that will burn everything to ashes. On Thursday, the leadership of the party Azad issued an official statement strongly condemning the actions of the egg-throwing Zhaltoksan members and asking the authorities to punish the hooligans. The return of Morgulan Sisimpo signals the improvement in the case of Alliance Bank. Its former owner returned to Kazakhstan with the words of loyalty to the, to the president Nazarbayev and the belief in a fair trial. The love for motherland and belief in justice, this is what made Margulan Sisimbayev return to Kazakhstan. More than a year ago, the law enforcement accused the ex-shareholders of the Alliance Bank of embezzling $1.3 billion. The list of accused included the Sisimbayev brothers, Mamurbekov, Abul Kasimov, Ivanov and Jomart Irtaev. Now the outlaw businessman has returned to prove his innocence and that of his colleagues. The Kazakh General Prosecution Office is investigating the criminal case against Sisimbayev. Thus, you can direct all related questions to that organization. On August 25, 2009, the former board chairman of the Alliance Bank, Jomar Kirtaev, was arrested and accused of embezzling $1 billion. As soon as all the top managers of the bank who worked there between 2002 and 2007 learned about the arrest, they quickly fled the country while the General Prosecution Office placed them on the international wanted list and instigated criminal cases. The investigation has completely proved the guilt of the accused Sisimbayev, Yirtaev, Mamarbekov, Abul Kasimov, Ivanov and other participants of the crime. During the investigation, some of the accused fled the country and remained outside Kazakhstan for a long time, for which they were placed on the international wanted list with a measure of restraint in the form of arrest. Jomar Tertaev was released nine months after his arrest and the prosecution office has requalified the embezzlement charges into accounting and financial reporting violations. Lawyer Tagir Sisimbayev intends to completely discharge the accusations against his client. However, the lawyer refused to comment the actions of the prosecution office after Sisimbayev's return and his new statements. I will not comment the situation. Representatives of the supervisory agency say that the infamous criminal case has been recommenced and C. Simbayev with his colleagues has been already charged. The prosecution office promised not to arrest the former shareholders until the appropriate court order. Interestingly, the pressure on the top managers of the Alliance Bank was exerted simultaneously with the instigation of criminal cases against the hands of the BTA Bank. It seems that repressions against the latter continue to aggravate even now, whereas the future of the former is starting to look a little brighter. All it took Margulan Sisimbayev to soften the prosecutors is a public statement with correct ideological context. The suspected in corruption former health minister Jaxalik Duskaliev will be examined by forensic experts. Reported on Thursday, representatives of the financial police, although claiming at the same time they see no need for such measures. After all, a couple of weeks ago, Russian independent experts already proved that the official didn't suffer the supposed stroke. Lawyers of the former health minister Doskali are celebrating their first victory. They have defended the right to conduct a medical examination of the official. The financial police says there are no grounds to do so, but admits that the arguments of the defense are convincing. Currently, there are no grounds to conduct a medical examination. However, for the purpose of providing unbiased investigation of the case, we have satisfied the petition of Doskoliev's lawyers to carry it out. The financial police referred to the opinion of Russian doctors who questioned Doskoliev's diagnosis of paralysis and stroke several weeks ago. Meanwhile, the ex-minister still refuses to answer the questions of the investigators. The lawyers of the former minister insist that their client is still recovering from his heavy illness. Medical experts will now have to prove this. He cannot get up from the bed and he is still on medication. There are doctors who look after him aside from the city's investigative ward. At the moment, his condition is under their supervision and they decide what treatment he should receive. Now the lawyers intend to change Doskaliev's detention conditions. The ex-minister has instable blood pressure and his defenders believe he should be transferred to the Neuro Surgery Center. The appropriate petition has been already sent to the financial police and will be examined on Friday. Following heavy fines issued to Almaty's newspapers Maya Respublika, Zad, Vzgliad and Alga, the authorities arrested the accounts of the publication Uralskaya Nidelia, the Uralsk Week. This West Kazakhstan newspaper will now have to pay almost $140,000 to the state treasury. This way officials seek to recover the money that the reporter Lukpan Ahmediarov must pay to the company Tengiz Neftistroy as compensation for moral damages. 
The lawsuit resulted from Lupanov Madiarov's newspaper article auction backstage published on August 6 of the last year. The journalist claimed that the company Tengiz Neftistroy had launched the construction of the pipeline Jepiti Karatube long before the announcement of an auction on the project Executor. Initially, the company asked for a half a million dollars for moral damages. In response, journalists filed an appeal to the UN committee that said the situation is an example of Kazakh authorities pressuring independent media. However, this was not a random attempt to shut down the outlet. In the past, it was denied the rent offices, printing houses refused to work with it, and legal actions were filed against its reporters. However, the recent financial pressure will likely destroy the largest independent newspaper in Western Kazakhstan, say its editor-in-chief. The action itself was a plan to shut down our outlet. It was clear from the start, and we never doubted that this is the wish of corrupt officials. Following this news, it is not surprising that Kazakhstan was rated as low as 162nd in the recent freedom of speech study of reporters without borders. For comparison, just a few years ago, the country assumed a much better 125th place. The critical situation with the freedom of speech was also discussed on Thursday by the chief editors of leading Russian media, as the Public Chamber of Russia hosted a meeting of the Commission for Communications, Information Policy and Freedom of Speech. It appears editors are seriously afraid to openly talk about the situation with the mass media in Kazakhstan, as it could potentially place their outlets in danger. In particular, the editor of the newspaper Argument i Fakty, Nikolai Zitkov, said that any statements about the regime in Kazakhstan, as well as suppression of freedom of speech, can negatively affect the work of the Russian newspaper in the country. However, the freedom of speech still can be saved, since reporters decided to fight against the injustice. I'm convinced that there is no point of fighting the authorities, instead they should be worked with and educated. Due to the lack of heating in the Almaty District Court, Judge Kairbekova decided to cancel the regular trial on the lawsuit of the People's Bank against the activists of the movement Leave Housing to People, Rosa Kadyrova. Instead, the judge chose to hold the hearing in her own office, although refusing journalists to cover the process. This prompted the defense to challenge the judge. We no longer trust the judge as she seems to be personally interested in the outcome of the case. It is clear because she doesn't allow the presence of the press at the trial. We do not understand why. If she had nothing to fear, the press would have free access even to her office. In its lawsuit, the National Bank asks the mortgage holder to pay $135,000. Supposedly, this is the amount Rosa Kadyrova owes to the bank for the mortgage loan taken back in 2006. The woman claims that according to the payment schedule, she still owes only $95,000. Kadyrova has filed a counterclaim against the bank to avoid remaining homeless, as the mortgaged apartment is her only housing. She is confident that the contract loan was signed with violations as the bank gave her the money in the US dollars and not national currency, as is specified by the law. The activists also claim that the bank has to recalculate the exchange rate difference. In 2006, one dollar cost 127 tenge, whereas now it is 147. Additionally, Kadyrova demands to deduct the bank's duties and insurance from the debt amount. The arguments of bankers will be presented during the next hearing at yet undetermined date. Another mortgage holder from Almasi is being evicted from her apartment for loan debts, although for some reason the decision of the district court is fulfilled even late at night. Kuljan Satabayeva claims the eviction is illegal since the process is not over yet and the appeal has been submitted to the country's Supreme Court. Together we are the power. About a hundred of activists of the movement of Leaf Housing to People protected the house of Kuljan Satubayeva. This was already the sixth attempt of BTA mortgage representatives and bailiffs to evict a woman from the only housing she has. Satubayeva's case is currently reviewed in the Supreme Court, thus there is no final decision over it yet. Officials, though, refuse to explain on what grounds they conduct their actions. Do you have a warrant or a court order? Why are you trying to evict those people? We wanted him to say that we have no laws for similar situations and they can evict people while the case is in the Supreme Court, but he seemed to mind all the press and public. No one attempted to evict the woman in the presence of the press. The assault began several hours later when reporters left the place. However, as soon as they returned, the fight stopped yet again. This time law enforcement had to explain themselves. The appeal was made to the Supreme Court a month ago, and although you say that it crosses your case, it doesn't do that yet. 
The bailiff handed Satibayeva summons to appear in the district court to take part in the review of her case. Nevertheless, the law enforcement agents tried to disperse the people and evict the women until late night.